and thermal cover coming open. Copy, Chris. And Josh, where was the green hook just at location? And Bob, we actually had you uh, not dropping the green hook during this, but if you need to, just let us know where you want. at the uh, CP13 uh, table bundle. Copy, Bob. It should be uh, on about handrail 0269, and that's the wire tie we'll be looking to release one twist from. Copy. Let me go ahead and uh, drop my green hook down here just so that it uh, doesn't keep windshield wipering across the we copy. Okay, so the green hook. Large ORU bag and crew lock bag are in the airlock, and I have P3 reel. Copy, Chris. We'll need a safer handle check once you're down and out of the airlock again. It's complete. Both are down. Copy, Chris. We can close the thermal cover and head out to your next work site, the Rouse Nest. Okay, my green hook is on a 0270 Alpha. Copy, Bob Green on 0270 Alpha. Cover closed. Heading out. Copy, Chris. Copy, Chris. And Bob, just to be sure, the cable you pick up to route should be labeled as Whiskey 4300. Copy. Whiskey 4300, and there's also a wire tie that's labeled uh, 13. 
copy, Bob. And so, Bob, as you know, we're just going to route that cable uh, starboard across the top of the lab. Um, your choice on the handrail locations, but let us know which, where you drop the wire ties. Copy. And, Bob, as you are getting closer to the CP13 camera, two cautions. For, as a reminder, do not use the WC antennas as a handhold and avoid inadvertent contact with that camera and light. Okay, in the rest nest at the spider cable. Hey, affirmative, Chris. Uh, so I believe you're looking uh, for the same bundle as you had last time. It'll be the starboard bundle. We're trying to identify W4300 um, as the one that we're going to take and mate to your cable. 4300 on, on the J4 connector. And Josh, it looks like this cable doesn't reach. Copy, Bob. We're looking. Makes it to handrail 272. Okay, we copy. You're at 272. Um, we'll have a look here. Um, we're probably going to end up wanting to go back and make sure that um, there's no unnecessary fair leads in uh, taking that cable up. Bob, we were going to suggest that you uh, kind of just temp secure that cable right where you are on the, the handrail that you have, and then we're going to work back up the lab, uh, up the port side, to see if we can find any slack to push forward. Yes, I have. Whiskey. Four three zero zero J four. Cap removed. Cap removes on the real P four. There's no fog. The pins are straight. Near my bands are good. Copy, Chris. That sounds good. You're go to mate J four W four three zero zero to P four W four two nine three. It's mated. And I'll start making my way out of here. And just uh, Josh, double checking W4300 is the cable that I've got. And uh, we've double checked, Bob, that's the correct cable. Okay. Working my way back. And Chris, uh, we'll probably focus on uh, finding room in Bob's cable at this point, but for you, you're basically following the same route you followed out on EVA2, and we're not picky on which handrails you use, we just ask that you report them. Okay. I'll uh, think I'm self-sufficient. I'll chime in if I need anything. Copy.
looks like the uh, SPDM is uh, right here. Copy. Are you expecting this cable to go underneath a trunnion pin cover? So trying to, the cable isn't continuously labeled, so I'm trying to make sure that I can visually still track of it. We think it should be right there by the trunnion pin cover. Copy. Bob, stand by. This view from Bob Benkin's helmet camera as he works to route the CP13 Ethernet cable. To the trunnion. It's adjacent to the trunnion and continues around the circumference. Um, is that? That's the correct routing. Um, Chris, just can you guys give me a big picture of where this cable routes? And we can, Bob. We're just trying to make sure we get you the, the exact right words. Okay, I'll stand by. Okay, so Bob, uh, we think we're looking at the correct cable plan here, and basically uh, from the rat's nest, that cable should run port across the top of the lab, nadir, and then once it's sort of a quarter way around the lab is where it takes off towards station forward. That's the big picture. In terms of looking for ideas of slack, um, you, we'll take a confirmation from you, but we think there might be a bundle of this wire on handrail 240. That's sort of uh, port side of the lab just before you get to the end cone, 24 or 260. And our thought was that if there is a bundle, uh, we might be able to do that, undo that and secure um, some more length that way. Okay. And Bob, uh, additional to that, so reference the trunnion pin that we were looking at earlier. Um, there's a handrail near the trunnion pin. I think it's just aft of it. It's handrail 226, and we're curious to know if there's slack bundled there as well. Yeah, at uh, 226, I don't believe there is any slack. I'll make my way all the way over there, but uh, from this angle, it doesn't look like any. Okay, copy. We'll take a look uh, anyway, and then, like I said, that was our, that's our first idea. If there's no slack there, then I think, unfortunately, we're gonna we're gonna be stuck with continuing to trace the cable station aft, 
and that's where we'll go have a look at that second handrail 240 and see if we can find any slack there. I found a, like a coil, maybe there was a, a coil here at handrail T26, single coil. So if, if we can confirm that that coil is in cable 4300, then, then we should be able to undo that, I, I believe. Yeah, the, the key, and I understand, is the difficult part is to make sure we're on 4300. Yeah, and, and I think that that cable at this point appears to go into a Y. It's another cable. It is labeled 4300. Got a visual on the label, and then that joins a bundle. A larger cable. And copy, Bob, that, that's helpful. So that, that is the correct wire. We understand it runs into the Y and then the bundle. Um, and words here, we want to push any slack we can get out of that forward towards CP13. It's not, it's not really a move the slack forward, but the uh, cable itself is a three-quarter inch diameter cable that uh, goes off in both directions. So I'll, I'll start working that little bit of uh, slack that is available back towards CP13. Copy. Josh, I'm on the uh, cable highway, no deviations from the previous laydown, Every, each wire tie has been the same. Copy, Chris. That uh, makes it simple. Your end stop point is 3222. Long ways from here, though. Roger that. Just for your essay, I'm at the point it's past the cedar spur where the cable makes the dog leg forward. Copy. We're at the four hour, 38 minute mark in today's spacewalk. Both astronauts working to route ethernet cables. You've got a view here from NASA astronaut Chris Cassidy's helmet camera. These ethernet cables will relay data from payloads on the International Space Station to their various customers.
and Bob, appreciate you um, tracing that cable back. We're still taking a deep dive on where we might be able to find some extra slack in this system, but nothing for you right now. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and I've got the couple of additional coils of slack out of the cable at this point. I will, uh, or slack added to the end. I'm going to go ahead and secure this wire tie just so that the cable, in case it's long enough, is secured. It's going to be an extensive job to go undo that uh, other cable and try to reposition that Y. Okay, we copy. And I don't think there's much I can do with that. We copy and concur. Ask him for an extension cord. <laughs> yeah. Okay, how do you guys feel about shortcutting um, the cable instead of going around the circumference um, from this point going diagonal a little bit uh, on the end cone? And that's, uh, hey, actually we're go on that plan. Okay. I don't know if that'll give us just a little bit. Yeah, it'll, it'll give us some. We That question had been asked, we were waiting on an answer, but it sounds like we're go for that. So let's see if that gets the extra foot or two. Teams here on the ground working with Bob Bankin. This view from his camera outside the International Space Station. He is routing the CP13 Ethernet cable. And they're working to ensure he can get the full length of that cable necessary. We also have another Ask NASA question from social media. This one from Victoria, who asks, what type of preparation the astronauts do before suiting up and getting ready to head out? Do they eat anything for sustained energy? The astronauts do prefer to eat before they head out of the door, considering it can be eight or more hours before they are able to replenish themselves once they get back into the airlock. One additional thought here is that we think we only need to get to the base of the stanchion itself um, because on the camera uh, the pigtail boom is what the pigtail rather is what we're going to mate to the cable and that has some length in it, roughly equivalent to the stanchion. So if we can just make the base of the stanchion, we think we might be able to make the connection. Hey, copy. However, another task that the astronauts complete before they suit up includes pre-breathing. That consists of two phases, and in the first, the crew breathes 100% oxygen through a mask to begin purging the nitrogen from their bodies. In the second phase is when the crew actually gets into their spacesuits and conducts that in-suit light exercise, or aisle. They move their arms and legs and raise their metabolic rate just slightly, but it helps speed up and get rid of the excess nitrogen.
Uh, Bob, from what we're seeing in your WVS, it looks like that's going to work. I think we are going to want to uh, end up going back and just securing the wire ties along the forward end cone of the lab to kind of tuck the cable down and, and flush against it, but we have lots of time. Copy. Okay, I've got it wire tied to the racetrack, and there's about, uh, you know, it's the, the connector does make it to the base of the stanchion, but uh, that's as far as it'll reach. Uh, we'll go back and tidy up the cable. And, uh, Bob, we, we, we're happy with the cable, so we're ready for you to, to tighten up the wire ties and that on the forward edge cone. We also wanted to offer it up to you while you're out here if you want to go straight ahead and take that uh, cover off now from the camera. We're good with that, whatever's easiest. Okay, I'll go ahead and go for the cover at, uh, at this point. Copy. And so, Bob, uh, with you moving on to the lens filter removal, a couple reminders, avoid contact with the light and the camera, uh, minimize all loads into the PTU joint, and avoid imparting kick loads above the launch restraint bolts. Okay, copy. And you just saw the completion of Bob Benkins routing that CP13 Ethernet cable. He's now moving on to remove a lens filter from a camera. Meanwhile, Chris Cassidy is also working on routing an Ethernet cable, the CP3 cable to be specific. This view is from his helmet camera, continuing to work as the International Space Station flies 262 statute miles over the Caspian Sea. Just a reminder, Bob, to have your trash bag ready. It'll be non-captive when you get it off. I've got my trash bag ready. Copy, and we're 20 seconds from the handover. Copy. This view from Bob Benkins' helmet camera as he prepares to remove that lens filter from this camera outside the International Space Station. We've got a quick handover, but we are approaching the four hour and 50 minute mark into today's spacewalk, which began at 6.12 a.m. Central Time, 7.12 a.m. Eastern. The astronauts have accomplished all of their scheduled tasks to this point, including the installation of the RITS or robotics tool storage. Copy, Bob. Good words. Last thing will be to verify the lens hood is square with the camera. And confirmation from Bob Binkin that the lens filter has been removed. Yeah, we're still looking to pick it up on the other side of the handover, so no WVS, but 
If uh, it looks square to you, we're good with it. Okay. It looks square, yeah, it did not move. Copy, Bob. In that case, uh, with respect to 4300, what we're looking to do, as discussed, is just tighten it up in the wire ties that are existing, and then, uh, if you can, take some closeout photos for us so we're 100% certain of the new routing, and that should complete the task. Bob Benkin is going to make his way back to that cable he routed earlier. He'll be taking some photos so the teams on the ground can verify the new route of that cable while also installing some wire ties along the way. My own little happy world. We copy, and uh, with that a good time, Chris, for the reminders, avoid contact with the uh, Targe beam near CP3 and verify the cable is clear of the Targe rotational envelope. See that it's going to lay right on top. It is laying right on top of the previous laid cable and uh, confirm it is all clear. Copy. So far. Josh, I will put in uh, one wire tie on handrail 0272. Copy, Bob. And the uh, cable itself is going to go inboard of the two antennas. If you uh, continue the cable routing, uh, I, I think I can't put it over the top of those. Uh, and Bob, we copy. Uh, it's still no WVS here, but we're good with that routing. Okay. Go ahead and uh, check the green light. And uh, yeah, I got a green light. Josh, what's my ending handrail? Two, right? Three, two, 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 two. And Chris, uh, A from three, triple two, 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 two. And for Bob, uh, that the issue's on us with KU. It's not you. Okay. And Chris, on that handrail three triple two, we want to use two wire ties to secure the bundle. Yeah, two wire ties. And that is where I am right now. Three triple two. Copy. 
As you can see, we do not have video communication with the International Space Station currently, as we are in a satellite handover. However, we do have audio communication and teams here on the ground, specifically Ground IV Josh Kutrick, a Canadian Space Agency astronaut there in the center of your screen, is communicating with Chris Cassidy, astronaut outside the International Space Station on today's spacewalk. Cassidy has been working to route a CP3 Ethernet cable along the outside of the station. He's now approaching the end of that task, working to stow the bundle, the wire, the cable bundle, to a specific handrail outside the station. With sunset approaching, you can see NASA astronaut Bob Behnken. You can tell it's him with those red rings around the legs of his spacesuit. That designates him as Spacewalker 1 with the backdrop of our mega solar arrays. Both he and fellow Spacewalker today, Chris Cassidy, are on their 10th spacewalk. Yeah, I'm pointing the GoPro along the length of the cable. On the uh, port side, there is a strut or a cable tray of some sort that comes across. The cable goes underneath that and into the original handrail. Uh, it was a tether to, and then that original tether where it was holding the bundle is uh, still captive of the cable. And I basically had this shortcut underneath the following two handrails, straight up and over that handrail that I gave you the uh, number of that I installed the wire tie on. Basically, I ended up skipping two of the circumferential handrails to get to uh, that location. And Bob, we copy. We do have your WVS back yet. Um, we think that's a good. We're, we're checking on the fact that, uh, like you said, you skipped two of the circumferential handrails. We'll get right back to you on that. The cable is as secure as the other cables that are out here. Copy. What it's worth.
Okay, three triple two. Two wire ties in the robot bundle. It is at no risk of uh, interfering with the charge rotational envelope. Copy, Chris. Uh, it looks good. We're still waiting on uh, one go back with Bob, so it might be a good time for the final club and half check. Up dry. Clubs look good. They survived the wire tie. Great. Ooh. Copy, Chris. Fact, I can just go for a wire tie and try to secure, add one more wire tie to the radial handrail. 80. That will help the cause. And Bob, uh, not needed. We're we're getting word that we're happy with the routing. We we weren't overly concerned with uh, the, how the cable was tied down. There was a question here about how it ran across the forward uh, micro MMOD shield, um, but we're content with it now and happy to head back in. Happy. And so that, with that, guys, uh, a couple cleanup items. Um, Bob, we check you heading back in, and Chris, just before you make your way in, we're, we're ready for the uh, inventory of that real bag whenever you are. Oh, boy, okay. Do you, you need a glove and hat for me, Josh, or you can do that. Don't stop right now before I pick up my green hook and head back. And Bob, uh, hey, firm, we'll take it now. My hat is dry. Uh, RTV on my left hand looks about the same, just a flap on the index finger. And there is a, a little bit more off of the palm, kind of in the right below the base of the index finger. And my right glove still looks to be pristine. Okay. To my green hook and then start making my way back. Copy, Bob, and we can curve green hook up and back to the airlock. Uh, for Bob and Chris, we just passed the five-hour mark, five hours. We're still good out to a seven-hour PET, but obviously we're on the way back in. Copy. Teams here on the ground confirming they are satisfied with the work Bob Bankin has conducted routing that Ethernet cable. Josh, you ready? We're ready. Okay. We have the real bag it, itself. On the outside, there is a wire tie caddy with nine wire ties in it. There are two adjustables going from the wire tie caddy attached to the bag. There is a long duration tie down tether. And there is a RET, an adjustable, a cap, and a plug. And the Copy, Chris, that's a good config on the bag. On the plug remains on the uh, end of the cable we just paid out. Yeah, we can cart. Good bag. Okay. Thanks, Mayor. And you just heard NASA astronaut Chris Cassidy, the commander of the International Space Station, reporting out on the inventory of his real bag. We have all the camera gear with us, so two GoPros and a still camera between the two of you. That's affirmative. I've got a still camera and a GoPro. And I have a GoPro, a mutt, and a um, adjustable. Sounds good. I guess there's a red on there, too. Yeah, red on there, too. Copy. Okay. 
and retrieve my green hook. Copy, Bob. Just for As you can see from Commander Chris Cassidy's helmet camera, he is now on his way back in toward the airlock. We're at five hours and eight minutes into today's spacewalk. Let's take a look back at everything the astronauts have accomplished. Today was scheduled to be a battery replacement spacewalk. However, the first three of this series of four, the astronauts worked so swiftly that they completed those battery removal and replacements in the last spacewalk. There's still one more battery that needs to be installed. It's already on the International Space Station following a lithium ion battery tripping last Last year, it will be installed in a future spacewalk. But today, the astronauts made it on internal battery power at 6.12 a.m. Central Time, 7.12 a.m. Eastern Time. Their first task was to install the RITS, or the Robotics Tool Storage, a protective storage unit outside the space station. It's permanently installed now to the Mobile Base System, or MBS. Inside the RITS are two RELs. That stands for Robotics External Leak Locators. Those are attached to the inside of the RITS, and the RELs can be picked up by the Special Purpose Dexterous Manipulator. That's Dexter. It's essentially the hand of the Canada Arm 2, and those RELs can be used to detect ammonia leaks on the outside of the space station. Following installation of the RITS and the necessary cables needing to be routed, the astronauts moved on to remove some H fixtures. My uh, waist tether is closed and locked on the airlock D-ring extender with my anchor hook and my right waist tether, I mean my right D-ring extender has the crew lock, on, crew lock side closed and locked. I agree I'm gonna unhook my tether. Chris, we copy you closed and locked to the airlock D-ring extender and you have a go to release uh, your anchor. Copy. I thought I see you there. The astronaut's second task they accomplished today was the removal of the 1AH fixture. Got this scoop in there. This was first attempted on July 1st and was met with some trouble, but with the proper tools today, the astronauts were able to release those H fixtures for future power system upgrades. The other side has it. Okay. I see the gates closed.
As Chris Cassidy removed that 1AH fixture, Bob Benkin worked to clean up the integrated electronics assembly from the previous three spacewalks. He then moved to the 3BH fixture and removed that smoothly as well. Roger. Both astronauts then made their way back to the airlock for a safety tether reset, preparing them for the next task. That task was preparation of Node 3's end cone, also known as Tranquility, for the attachment of the NanoRacks airlock later this year. The NanoRacks, NanoRacks airlock will arrive on a SpaceX rocket later this fall, and it will be the first commercial airlock on the space station. You can see the astronauts now heading into the airlock once again, but now because all of their tasks are complete. Right. I'm in. Copy. Transition to the airlock. Ray extender. Following the preparation of the Node 3 end cone, which included tying back three axial shields, both astronauts went on to route Ethernet cables. Chris Cassidy focused on the CP3 Ethernet cable while Benkin worked on routing the CP13 cable. He then also removed a lens filter from the CP13 area. My left waist tether is closed and locked to the air, air lock D-ring extender. Copy that, Bob. Uh, with that, you can pick up your anchor, stow it on your mini workstation. Complete. And Bob, can we can we just? And Bob, we just want to verify your the small hook of your waist tether is to your D ring extender locked. It is closed and locked. My D ring extender. Copy that. We'll pick the anchor up, ingress, and a reminder to have one final look at that pit pin as you go by it, please. Okay. Hey, I don't, uh, I don't see the pit pin. Yeah, it's not, uh, installed. I get uh, floated over here to the, the back. And uh, Bob, we, we copy and oh, we're, uh, we're looking in your WVS. I've uh, reinstalled the pip pin. Copy, Bob. Thanks. Yeah, I floated all the way over behind this uh, white little in the hole that's on that support. Roger. Anything else, Josh? I'm just uh, looking around the room one last time, Stemma. And Bob, uh, if you don't mind, since we do have lots of time, we're at 5.15, um, we would like you to take that pit pin out again, actuate the detents mechanism, and just see if you can see whether or not the ball detents are working and, and moving. Okay. Station clean. You want me to take anything? Um, I think I'm pretty good. I could uh, turn off the GoPro, but uh, I think that would be probably not not worth the worth the effort. Okay.
Okay, so I'm able to actuate the uh, PIP pin when it is not installed. I'm kind of, what you can't do is I can pull it back out. You can see that on my WVS. Yeah, we can uh, see it. I can pull it up. Then when I push it in, it stays in. There might be a way to push it in and then try to um, hold on to the collar when I reinsert it. We're happy for you to give that a try. Okay, so if I insert the pit pin and hold on to the collar, I can secure, I can get it to get stuck in there. So I can pull out the spring mechanism. I don't know how long it will stay like that because it just needs to get bumped and then it will compress again. But it's, it's a captive if it gets snagged right now, but if you push it in, it will, it will stay that way. We could cycle it several times just to see if we can get it to pop back out. I don't know if that's a value to you or not. Okay, thanks, Bob. That's very valuable. Yeah, very good info. We we can see it in your WBS, and uh, I think we're we're pretty much finished up with it. So we'll leave it inserted as best you can, and that'll be it. With Chris Cassidy now inside the airlock, this is a view from the helmet camera of Bob Benken. He's troubleshooting a PIP pin. That stands for push and pull. And so, Bob, unable to see, but uh, you are going to close the thermal cover and attach the Velcro strap. And Bob Benkin is now also heading back inside the airlock with a go to close that thermal cover. That large or you bag is large now, isn't it? Yeah. And this view inside the International Space Station. And Bob, I think you're looking at the same thing as us. Similar to last time, if you can, hold the handrail and try to pop it back out to get rid of that gap in the thermal cover. A view back inside from Bob Benkin's helmet camera, you can see that thermal cover of the hatch is closed. Uh, gosh, I've cycled it several times. It's, uh, it's about the extent of it. Keep trying. Okay, copy, Bob. Thanks. We're, it sounds like the limit is five inches, but um, that looks to be it's certainly less than it was. So. Yeah, it looks all about the same to me. It's probably about three inches uh, or less on the forward side and maybe four on the aft. Copy. Now we're going to continue uh, inbound. So Bob and Chris onto the SCU steps 
You can remove your SCUs from the storage pouches, remove your DCM covers, Velcro to the DCM, and connect your SCUs. Let me know when that's done. That's in work. Copy in work. Just trying to keep your feet from down into the thermal cover there. Oh, okay. My SCU is locked. You two SCU locked. Copy locked on both. And this view from the equipment lock portion of the Quest airlock. To off forward and expect a water off message. Water is off. Water off. Copy. We're starting the timer. That's NASA astronaut Doug Hurley awaiting his crewmates. They're currently in the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock. Good. Still waiting on the opportunity to close the hatch. However, the spacewalk does not end until repressurization begins. in here. Luckily the Ritz and Team Dave made it happen, so. Amen. Hey, congratulations again to the H fixture team that's uh, coming up with a plan with OSO's help to get those uh, two fixtures removed. Thanks, Bob. And Bob, that's the two minutes. So for Bob, verify outer hatch clear of hardware. Okay, the outer hatch is clear of hardware. Bob, verify handle position per hatch decal. Okay, the handle position is per the hatch decal. Bob, close and lock the hatch. Okay. Also now in view inside the equipment lock portion of the Quest airlock, Roscosmos cosmonaut Anatoly Ivanishin. and the astronauts are closing the hatch. The 
hatch is closed and locked. Copy, Bob. So into the pre-repress steps for EV1 and 2, we want to check SCU connected to DCM. Verify for EV1. Verify EV2. Copy. EV1 and 2, check water switch is off. EV1, water switch is off. EV2, water off. EV1, check EV hatch closed and locked. The EV hatch is closed and locked. EV2, on the UIA, check oxygen for EMU 1 and 2 valves, both of them open. Oxygen, EMU 1, EMU 2, both valves open. EV2, on the UIA, you can switch power for EV1 and 2, both to on, and check that the power EV, EMU 1 and 2 lights are on. EV1, EV2, power is on. Copy. EV2, check the EV1 and 2 voltages. EV1 and EV2 voltage are both 18.6. I copy 18.6 on both. EV1 and 2 on your DCM switch power to SCU. Expect a warning tone. EV1 coming to SCU. EV2, SCU. Copy SCU on both. So, Chris and Bob, a pleasure working with you today. Thanks for the help, and I will turn you over to Doug. Good luck on the rest of your mission. Thank you, Josh. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate Good job. It. Yep. Okay, welcome back on your DCMs. Take your O2 actuator to press. In work. In work. EV1, O2 actuator is in press. EV2, O2 actuator in press. Copy both in press. Bob, check the EV hatch. MPEV is closed. Copy. The EV hatch, MPEV is closed. Okay, next I'm going to start uh, throttling uh, the uh, IV hatch equalization valve. Just let me know if uh, it's too much, and I'll throttle it uh, slowly to norm. I'll copy. Give you one copy. Give you two copy. We are now approaching the five and a half hour mark into today's spacewalk. Yes, even though the hatch is closed and the astronauts are back inside the crew lock portion of the Quest airlock, the timer still continues as it will not stop until repressurization of that portion begins. Okay, it's in norm. When uh, we get to 4.0, it's affecting alert tone. Copy, copy. Good rate for EV1, good rate EV2. See, good rate. Stopped at 5.0, and we're timing for two minutes for stabilization. Copy.
And with the beginning of repressurization of the Quest airlock, we have the end of today's spacewalk. That rounds out at 5 hours and 29 minutes from the time the astronauts switched their suits to battery power at 6.12 a.m. Central Time this morning, 7.12 Eastern, and ending at 11.41 a.m. Central Time, 12.41 p.m. Eastern, with the beginning of repressurization. A lot of little funnies with that, huh? With display and then yeah. of debris and a cable that was too short. Yeah. But the H fixers came through, so that's good. Does the last one feel like the first one? Or the tenth one feel like the first one? I don't want to. Presuppose any basis. <laughs> well, I'm a little more comfortable on your tenth one than the first one. View's always amazing, though. Yeah. Hey, there's two minutes, and it was stable. We'll wait one more minute. Cassidy and Bankin discussing their experiences today. Both of them have just completed their 10th spacewalk. Okay, there's the another minute, and pressure's still stable. Go ahead and check uh, your glove heaters are, are off. V1 glove heaters are off and yeah. no contamination. V2 glove heaters off and no contamination. Okay, copy both. On your DCM, take your O2 actuator to IV. Doesn't work. TV1, O2 actuator is IV, TV2, O2 actuator IV. Copy both in IV. We're going to open up the uh, equalization valve again. Just let me know uh, how it uh, feels as we get all the way back to uh, normal. Copy. Because they spells in normal. Copy. Good rate for EV1. Good rate EV2. EV2, good rates. Expect a alert tone when we get close to uh, DPDP is zero. Copy. Air molecules hustle back in here a lot faster than they hustle out of here. Because science. Because science, yep.
kind of have that feeling where the like the divers are swimming me through the wall right now. Yeah. Just totally relax. Except that I don't feel like I've mortgaged the future as much as I typically would on a NBA run. Thank you. <laughs> RTV peel off on your left hand again, or did they say it'll stay good? No, they're, they're rock solid, both of them. And with the conclusion of today's spacewalk at 5 hours and 29 minutes, let's take a look at some spacewalk statistics. This was the 231st spacewalk in support of space station assembly and maintenance, the seventh this year. This, me this makes the fourth spacewalk for the Expedition 63 crew. It's the tenth spacewalk for Bob Behnken, and his total time spacewalking is 61 hours and 10 minutes. It's also the tenth spacewalk for Chris Cassidy, his total reaching 54 hours and 51 minutes. Today's spacewalk lasted 5 hours and 29 minutes, and of all spacewalking time across those 231 in support of station assembly and maintenance, that equals 60 days, 12 hours, and 3 minutes of spacewalking time. Also notable for Chris Cassidy, he is now ninth on the all-time list of spacewalking time, while Binken is now fourth on the all-time list for spacewalk time. They both, now with 10 spacewalks, tie Michael Lopez Alegria and Peggy Whitson as the only other spa U.S. astronauts con to conduct 10 spacewalks in their career. Be pretty close. Depressurization continues in the Quest airlock, and this look inside the International Space Station Flight Control Room. Here. We're going to go to post EDA. Step one. That's Flight Director Allison Bollinger in the black jacket. She led the teams throughout the spacewalk today. NASA astronaut Doug Hurley opening that hatch between the crew and equipment lock portion of the Quest airlock. Okay, copy that. Houston, if you can take care of step four. Step four is in work. And airlock step four is complete, so at this time uh, the EV crew is no longer hot mic to the ground. We do still have your data and you're go to continue. That's the voice of NASA astronaut Anne McLean now serving as the CAPCOM for the crew now that they are back inside the International Space Station.
After installing RITS and routing some associated cables, Cassidy moved on to remove the 1A H fixture. The H fixtures were used for ground processing solar arrays prior to launch, but needed, needed to be removed for future power upgrades. The first attempt to remove these was on the July 1st spacewalk. With no luck on that day, the astronauts returned today and were able to more easily release those fixtures. As Cassidy removed the 1AH fixture, Bob Benkin worked to clean the integrated electronics assembly area after the last three spacewalks in that location. He then moved on to remove the 3BH fixture, another one of those necessary for removal for future power system upgrades. Once those tasks were complete, the astronauts headed back to the airlock for a safety tether reset. This prepared them for their next task, NanoRacks airlock preparation. The NanoRacks airlock will be the first commercial airlock, and it will launch on a SpaceX rocket later this fall. Our astronauts headed out to the Node 3, or Tranquility, end cone. Here they removed they tied back three axial shields, preparing that space for the future airlock to be installed once it arrives later this year. After completing the work at the Node 3 area, both astronauts moved on to some cable routing. Chris Cassidy routed the CP3 Ethernet cable while Bob Benkin focused on the CP13 cables. And once complete, Benkin moved on to remove a lens filter from a camera in the CP13 area. The spacewalk was originally planned to continue power upgrades through the removal of nickel hydrogen batteries with their replacements, lithium ion batteries. However, these two astronauts worked swiftly through those procedures in the first three spacewalks of this series, therefore leaving the opportunity for today's task to be completed. All in all, that totals out at a five hour, 29 minute spacewalk and a big thumbs up from Chris Cassidy. And with Chris Cassidy back in the equipment lock portion of the Quest airlock, we now see Bob Benkin has been brought in as well. Anatoly Ivanishin and Doug Hurley working to remove the SAFER, the Simplified Aid for EVA Rescue, that sort of jetpack backpack we discussed. Fortunately, that was not used today, as it's only intended for a crew member to maneuver independently of the space station in case they were to become detached from a tether.
The International Space Station currently flies 269 statute miles over Chile. And a big accomplishment today for these two spacewalkers. Both just completed their 10th spacewalk. This puts them in a tie with Michael Lopez Al Alegria and Peggy Whitson. They are now the only other U.S. astronauts to conduct 10 spacewalks in their career. Chris Cassidy is also now in ninth place on all-time spacewalking list, and Bob Behnken is fourth on that list. as our astronauts prepare to doff or remove their suits. Another look at today's spacewalk statistics. It was the 231st spacewalk of Space Station Assembly and Maintenance, the seventh spacewalk this year, and the fourth of Expedition 63. Of all spacewalks conducted through Expedition 63, they total at 23 hours and 37 minutes. It was Chris Cassidy's 10th spacewalk. He now has a total of 54 hours and 51 minutes of spacewalk time and is ninth on the all-time spacewalking list. Bob Behnken also completed his 10th spacewalk and now has 61 hours, 10 minutes of spacewalk time, fourth all-time on that list. They both tie with Michael Lopez Alegria and Peggy Whitson as the only other U.S. astronauts to conduct 10 spacewalks throughout their career. But of these 231 spacewalks at the space station, that time totals up to 60 days, 12 hours, and 3 minutes. And, uh, if you could just give me a thumbs up when you hear me. Uh, we were seeing a little bit of a smudge on Chris's WVS camera. Uh, so before you take the helmet off or as you take the helmet off, we're wondering if you could just peek at his center camera on his helmet to see if you happen to see anything uh, like a smudge on it or something uh, attached to the front of that camera. As they remove the helmets today, the crew on board the space station will take an extra look at the WVS on Chris Cassidy's helmet. That's the wireless video station, wireless video system, or uh, the helmet camera that you saw today.
This isn't the only dynamic activity for the International Space Station this week. On Thursday, we'll be looking forward to the Progress 76 launch and docking. Those will both occur on this Thursday, July 23rd. Coverage for launch begins at 9 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Eastern, and launch itself will happen at 9.26 a.m. Central, 10.26 Eastern. After a short flight in space, Progress 76 will arrive at the space station the same day. Coverage begins at 12 p.m. Central, 1 p.m. Eastern, and docking itself should take place at 12.47 p.m. Central, 1.47 p.m. Eastern time. You can tune in and watch live on nasa.gov slash live. And Doug, we can, we can address that after you guys uh, get them out of the suit. So uh, after we hang up the helmet when we have a minute, we'll take a look at it. Sounds good. Thanks, Sam. Today's spacewalk lasted 5 hours and 29 minutes, starting at 6.12 a.m. Central Time, 7.12 Eastern, and ending at 11.41 a.m. Central Time, 12.41 p.m. Eastern. Today, our astronauts accomplished in the installation of the new external storage space for robotic equipment, known as RITS. They also removed two H fixtures for future power system upgrades and prepared the Node 3 end cone for future installation of the NanoRacks airlock. They also completed some pa power cable routing on the outside of the station and removed a camera lens filter. With our astronauts back safe inside and their helmets removed, that's going to wrap up our coverage of today's spacewalk. Thanks for joining us. This is Mission Control Houston.